I'm Charlie Reimer, and this is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, powered by PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com. That's the way I roll. So I'm here at TPC Myrtle Beach in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina at the Dustin Johnson Golf School. And today, I'm gonna get a really cool fitting from uh, Alan Terrell, DJ's longtime coach. Alan runs a golf school along with the Dustin Johnson Foundation. And if you didn't know, the Dustin Johnson Golf School, it just got named again by Golf Digest as being one of the top 24 golf schools in the country, and it's the top three in the Southeast. I love getting new clubs, especially really cool tailor-made stuff. Come on. Hey, Alan, good to see you, buddy. We hey, gotta Charlie. do the yeah, yeah, air, air. air yeah. touch. I I'm gonna tell you what, I'm happy to see you. I'm 52, folks, and things ain't working like they used to, Alan. I need a little bit of help. Can you help me out? We can, we can definitely help you out. We got you covered. So we already got some stuff set up for you. We're gonna go through our woods, get you some extra yardage if you need it. I don't know, you hit it pretty hard. But I need it, I need it. <laughs> we're gonna get those wedges dialed in so we get some birdies and uh, get, some, uh, get some iron so we can get some uh, more greens in regulation. That's awesome. Uh I got a little surprise for you. Not that I don't trust you, but I got on the line, calling in on FaceTime. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. Tomo Bystet, he's the director of product creation for TaylorMade. So he might be able to help a little bit too. Oh, man, I can need all the support you can give me. So I appreciate Tomo's a great, great uh, resource. I've got a surprise. Tomo's awesome. This guy, you may have heard of him. DJ's gonna call in. No! He heard you were going to come by today. He wanted to be on your show and help us with your fit. So he's going to call in from his boat down in Florida today. The real Dustin Johnson, real U.S. One. Open champion, 20-time PGA Tour winner, yeah. long-hitting, short-talking. That's definitely him. Nothing bothers him? That's him. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Let's do it. Uh, Charlie, wrong way, brother. We're going to go down here. Come on. Go back. Down this way. Come on, I'll get you ready. Just follow me. <laughs> well, Alan, we've managed to get Tomo Bystet back again today, and uh, he's the one that for years now, 14 years, has made all the tailor made stuff so sexy. And you got two sexy guys, Tomo, you know, talking sexy product, and, and, and I'm, I'm holding the, the Sim Max, and this. I'm joking about the sexy part, but it, this is the sexy part of the golf industry. It, it, driver, right? you know, that's the first thing people want. You, know, you, you can prove your handicap from 10 to five, that's great, but people want, if you pick up some yardage with a driver, they get really excited about that. But, but uh, walk me through your current product offering, and, and in particular, uh, the area where you think it might help me, because this is all about me, Tomo. It's a Charlie Reimer show. Yeah. yeah. Charlie Reimer show and Charlie Reimer's fit. Yeah, Charlie, well, great, great to be back here with you guys. <clears throat> you know, the, the new lineup this year is Sim, and, and Sim has been incredible for us, honestly. Um, you know, unfortunately, with the lockdown and the virus, obviously, people are staying safe, and we're not playing as much golf, and we haven't been over the last couple of months. Uh, but I think when things get started up again, uh, Sim's just going to hit its stride, uh, again, both with consumers and on tour. So uh, it's been great. Essentially, there's three different drivers in the lineup. There's a Sim, the Sim Max, and the Sim Max D. And it's really, what we try to do this year is make it really simple for people to find the right one. And hopefully, Charlie, we can find the right one for you uh, among that lineup based on the fact that they do offer different types of performance. The Sim, first of all, is a um, very low spin product. It's, it's our lowest spinning driver. Um, you see, that's most of what the tour guys are using. Some of the tour guys use the Sim Max, but a lot of the tour guys use, for sure, the Sim. The Sim also has a sliding weight, so you have a, a movable weight, 
to, again, adjust about 15, 20 yards of, of draw fade in that head as well. So that's in the standard SIM driver. The SIM max is going to be max, and it's max for forgiveness. That's what the whole point of the max driver is to maximize inertia, maximize the size of the sweet spot on the face uh, by putting more of the weight back. So we've essentially taken the weight that we had in the track on the SIM driver, put it in the back, made it really, really forgiving. And then the max D, we've done taking some of that weight and put in the heel of the club and made it more draw bias. So there's essentially three different types of types of performance there. The sim is going to spin the lowest. The sim max is going to spin about 300 RPMs more. Uh, and then the sim uh, max D, another 100 RPMs or so above that. So some different performance. And obviously, this is going to be a little bit of left to right difference too. Uh, but not so much difference between sim and sim max. More of the the uh, movable weight effect there. Uh, obviously, what's new about these clubs, it's a totally new shape, uh, Charlie. And so SIM stands for shape and motion, and I've got one right here. Uh, and basically, what you're going to notice is this very asymmetric sole, right? And that's all about going with the airflow while keeping the ability to keep lo weight low and back in the head. So that's why you see this really flat sole, high crown, and this weight back here. And it's really breaking that trade-off, uh, Charlie, of, of being able to get good speed and good forgiveness in the same product. And that's really what the SIM stuff is all about. What uh, you said, most of the tour guys are in the sim. Obviously, DJ's a low spin guy, so he's more in the max because he we, he needs a little spin on it. That's correct. Yeah. So the some of the guys who, who hit up on the ball a lot, the Rory's, the DJ's, who are naturally low spin guys, do have the flexibility of really playing either driver. You know, they they they, they don't get too much spin with the max. I mean, they're high ball speed guys, very high ball ball speed, 180 plus. Uh, but they can still play the max and keep the spin rates good because they have such a good path. Now, the other golfers who are more sort of typical, myself included, definitely <clears throat> definitely get more distance with the sim because I can drop that spin rate a little bit lower. So it really depends on your swing and, and kind of what your typical launch conditions are as a good starting point for the, trying to find the right balance between the two drivers. Tell me the first time, and this has been a while back, um, that I had a chance to go into a West Coast golf club design facility and, and like going to Carlsbad there. I mean, it's amazing. It's like going where they build rockets and that sort of stuff. It's an unbelievable experience. But the technology was uh, that there was a whole bunch of smart guys designing clubs on a computer. And then they would actually, they had some sort of like a 3D printer. It wasn't wood, but it was some sort of composite and, or maybe a hard foam, and, and you could hear the machine buzzing over there, and things were flying around, and they, and they would actually show me that they printed out a, a driver, and, and they would take that and put it in a wind tunnel and do all this sort of testing and all that. That's been 15, 18 years ago. I, it, the, the, the design, talk to me a little bit about the, the, the way design of a product like this has evolved over the years. Well, you know, Charlie, the big difference nowadays is, you know, we can simulate so much of the performance uh, virtually in the computer. Before any parts are made, we know within a couple of percent of how it's going to perform. We know exactly where the CGs are going to end up, how that CG is going to affect the ball flight, how the CG is going to affect the feel and the sound of the club, um, you know, whether we need to put ribs in there to improve the sound. There's so many things we can simulate, including aerodynamics now. Like, one of the things that we, that's really cool about how we designed this product is it's sort of a three-stage process. We actually design it in the computer first. We do all the simulation, the modeling for stresses, aerodynamics, all that technical stuff. And then when we feel like that's in a good spot, we actually make parts. We, we do print, uh, like you said, 3D printed parts. And that's more for shaping to make sure. And that's, you know, a lot of what I do is I make sure these are shaped right. Because obviously it's all well and good to have it perform well. Uh, but if it looks weird to you when you put it down behind the ball, well, that's not going to give anybody confidence, and that's not going to get tour players happy to play those products. So it's got to look right uh, behind the ball as well. So that's a lot of what we do in the mock-up stage with, with those 3D printed parts. But we also do a lot of player testing. We know st there's still a lot of value in having real people hit these products, uh, and so we do that tirelessly. Almost every single day we have player tests running. We have a lot of quantitative data, qualitative data as well, on how these perform with real players in real situations. Um, and so we marry up all that together uh, really to make the product as good as we can. Tomo, Alan and I get along pretty well most of the time. Uh, him fitting me in a three wood might cause a fight because that's the hardest club to fit. Hardest, three wood. hardest thing in the world to fit. I, I call, hey, you got a little one back there behind you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we welcome all sorts of guests on our show, but. The three, what I call the devil's club, because it is the hardest club to fit. What what are my uh, options uh, for three wood uh, with TaylorMade right now? 
Well, so basically we have the same kind of lineup as we do on the driver, the SIM, the SIM Max, and the SIM Max D uh, available in fairways as well. And what's nice about it is that they line up pretty similarly for performance. The SIM is going to be your lowest launch spinning of the three models. They're going to launch kind of similar height, but the lowest spinning one. So again, if you're really looking for distance, you're looking for that ball that rolls out a bit more and just hitting it out, maybe you use it all off tee, the SIM is going to be a great option. The SIM Max, again, it's going to be a little bit more spin, about three, 400 RPMs more spin than the SIM. Uh, it, similarly, though, really long, great ball speed. And split between the two, and then we have a draw version as well on the SIM Max D. So that's kind of how it lines up. And all of them, one of the new things in this product is going to be the V Steel Sole. And the V Steel Sole is in all the new fairway woods uh, across the board. And I've got one here as well I can show you. So the V Steel Sole is basically this kind of channel down the center uh, with these, with these, uh, Recess pockets on the heel and the toe. In your experience, Alan, getting players in three woods is it, is, is it as hard as I think it is, it's or am the I hardest, overblowing this? Hardest thing, because it's a, it's kind of a multi-use club. You know, something good off the tee, something good off the ground. Thankfully, the V still, you guys brought that sole back, so that that turf interaction is uh, is super super popular. And the other thing it's really good for, if I'm going to throw any club in my bag, it's going to be the three wood. I can just tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get him in a hybrid, but he's, he's uh, no. fighting me. He's no, fighting me all the hybrid, way. Hybrids are good for hitting houses that are long and left. That's what they're good for. Hey, DJ's in a hybrid now, Tomo. I mean, yeah. you got him in a hybrid. You know, that's been, that's been the great success story, uh, uh, honestly. Or, or I would say the surprise success story. 2020 for us is how well the Sim Max Hybrid has done. So the Sim Max Hybrid is again, it's in the family of the Sim Max product, uh, and it's a, and it's a hybrid club. And, and you know, we've made some really interesting, subtle tweaks to this that suddenly has gotten in and play in a lot of tour players' bags. You know, with M6 as an M4 before, we really had nobody playing them on tour. This one has just done the right things, and now you see it in the bags of Rory McIlroy, DJ, like you mentioned, is playing this product. And we have about sort of seven to let's call it seven to eight guys every week playing this product in the bag, and that's been really really cool to see, uh, even from guys like the forever in their whole career. So yeah. when that's you when success when you say it's doing the right things, and just tell me if I'm right here, the, the hybrids and and I and I going back years and years, some of the first ones, and Taylor was one of the first to market with a rescue, but. There's, there's a fear among stronger players that thing every now and then it's going to go long and left. When I look at that product in your hands, there, it looks like it's a little bit bigger. It looks like it might be weighted a little bit differently. When I look at that club, I don't lights don't go off in my head going this thing's going to go long and left. Is is that what players like about your your new hybrid? Yeah, definitely. One of the things is is it doesn't go as much left, and and honestly, that's been a the number one complaint I would say with better players and not playing hybrids or rescues is the fear of that left shot. And so one of the goals for this product was how do we remove that ability without making a slice machine for the other people, you know? So mm -hmm. what we did was actually a couple of subtle things. We changed the masking on the top line. It's going to be hard to show on camera, but you're going to see it in, in real life. We, should, we changed actually the, how this masking looks, and it's going to look a lot straighter, more like an iron at, at the front. It's not going to have that big curvy toe area where it fades away in the toe. Uh, and also the uh, the twist phase is an important part of this too. Twist phase, obviously, we added that in, in our into our rescue and fairway lineup last year, but it's been such a, a, a cool thing to have, especially on, on rescues because of the toe miss, right? So most of the misses that are going left, the ones you're talk, talking about are because of you hitting it on the toe and you get that gear effect. Rescues are low inertia ahead, so that you get a lot of gear effect, a lot of hook spin on the ball. And the twist phase just opens that face a little bit more in the high toe that makes the ball start a little bit more right. So if you do hit that toe shot, it's just not going to go as far left. And so the miss is not as bad. And now you get all the benefits of, of rescues versus irons, which is easier to hit. They go higher. They land softer on greens um, without the, the sort of the typical penalty of that bad left miss. So that's kind of, I guess, why these guys are playing it. He's talked me into maybe trying one out. You're and 52, and Charlie. I'm 52, and I can't wait. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Dustin Johnson. We're going to ask him about what he likes about having that club in his bag. Tomo, uh, as always, great spending some time with you. Appreciate you educating us, and uh, best of luck to all the folks at Taylor Made, yourself, your whole family, and getting this crazy mess behind us and getting us all out on the golf course and playing some great golf. Well, thank you, Charlie. Same to you guys as well. You know, good luck with the fitting, but most importantly, stay safe, stay healthy, and, and uh, looking forward to seeing you down the road somewhere. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Tomo. All right, we are back with Dustin Johnson. He's assisting 
along with Alan Terrell, a longtime coach of DJ. My club fitting. We're getting into the driver now. D DJ, can you see me good on that FaceTime? Okay. You, all right, you got you, you ready? All right. You're, you're hard to miss, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. All right, here we go. This is a Sim Max. That may or may not have been a little left, but man, did it feel good. I haven't hit this club yet. Sim Max, they tell me this is the one that's in your bag. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. I'm using the Sim Max 10.5. Uh, exact same head, Charlie. That, see, that seems like most people, when they, they see you play, they, they think, oh, Dustin Johnson, he, oh, he's got to be hitting something that's 8 degrees or maybe bent down a little bit less. I think that's a misconception that a lot of amateurs have about what's in the top players' bags. Yeah, there's very, very few guys on tour use less than nine degrees of loft. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple that still do, but very few of them have less than a nine in their bag. When you're going through the process of testing equipment, when new stuff comes out, and the companies have new stuff that comes out every year, how much do you rely on technology versus just looking at it and going off your gut when you're looking at putting something new in the bag? Um, well, first, I, I like to hit it and see it myself, and then if I like it, then I'll get on a track man. But generally, I can tell you exactly what the track man's gonna gonna say, you know, when I hit the ball. So I've, I've hit enough golf shots now and seen enough that I. I can get pretty close with the spin rate. You know, the only thing that's, you know, I can get pretty close with the speed too. How challenging it is, is it to put a, put a driver and a shaft combination in, uh, in a top player's hands? Well, with him, I mean, he, he has great feel, but I've seen him look at a driver head and it was a quarter degree off a loft and who could see that? Yeah. But, you know, guys like him can, can can feel that see it but i mean he's a low spin guy so he doesn't need to be in nine degrees yeah he doesn't need to be in overly heavy shafts i mean he doesn't want his misses hitting the ground fast yeah so most amateurs are high spin but guys with speed that launch it good like dj and rory they they don't need that uh dj let's talk a little bit about the three wood what three woods currently in your bag uh the the sim, Max. And that's the one that has a little more spin, correct? I don't know. It's the V-Steel. Yeah, it's the sim Max. Yeah. Yeah, the V-Steel one. And that's a little bit bigger head. Is, is that a club? Yes, yeah, it's, slightly, it's slightly bigger, but for me, it, it, it's really square. The face is really yeah. straight, so that's what I really like about it. And I've, I've been, you know, it's one of my favorite three woods I've ever had. Is a three wood, and a lot of people say this. In fact, I call it the Devil's Club because well, he'll I, definitely agree. I can't. I mean, I, a three wood is a, that is for me. It's a hard club to put in the bag. Has that been the case for you throughout your career? Yeah, um, it, it's funny when I'm warming up. I always hit a couple of three woods, especially like when I was playing really well. I knew if I was if I was hitting a heel slice with my three wood, I knew it was going to be a good day because that means I was swinging really good. <laughs> I mean, and it was, like, so ugly and so nasty, low heel slice off the range, but I knew I was going to play good that day. That's funny. <laughs> I'm going to work on my heel yeah, slice. Or zoom yeah, zoom yeah, zoom well, slice. I, just, I knew because everything else in my bag I was hitting really well, but the three wood, I'd, I'd heel cut it every time. But it was fine. As long as I was hitting everything else good, I wouldn't hit the three wood. Is, is a three wood a, a, a club that's primarily for you off the tee, or is it one that you're looking uh, to use out of the fairway? Yeah, uh, mine's most all driving. Mm -hmm. Very rarely will I hit a three wood off the fairway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, this new three wood is, you know, for me, I really like it. I feel like it matches up really well with the rest of my clubs. So, you know, it's, it's the first one that I found that's really matched like with all my clubs throughout the set, where I feel like if I make this, I can make the same swing and hit a good shot with it. And then also, I put in the new rescue too. I know DJ. I'm trying yeah, to, I'm trying yeah, to get rescue. rescue. I, no, it ain't gonna happen. Rescue, rescues are good for hitting houses long and left over the back of the green. 
Well, that's what I thought too. Until I hit this one, I can hit a nice, pretty high cut with it. What, what's different about it? Is it the length of the club, or is it something we can't see the way it's weighted? I just, well, I think the they did a really good job with the with the face. It sits really square. Usually, a lot of times to me, rescues always look like they're hooked, mm -hmm. and so that's you know I hit them all left every time. And this one, it's really consistent with the spin rate. Um, that was another issue I had with rescues. I'd hit one spinny, I'd hit one flat, and then I'd hit one normal. With this one, I feel like the consistency is a lot better, and like I said, it's easy to hit a high cut with. What, what's a pretty standard carry yardage for you with that rescue? Um, the three rescue is about, I don't know, 260. Yeah, and that's coming in pretty soft. It isn't going to run out that much at 260. Yeah, two, 255, 260. Yeah. And then I got a four rescue depending on, you know, I'll, I won't carry them both, but I'll flip them in and out. That's right at 250, 248, somewhere around there. So you're recommending that an old fat guy like me might ought to look into one? Is that what you're saying? I'd recommend everybody look into one. <laughs> Nice, nice reply. <laughs> I just say I I never thought that I'd ever hit one. Yeah. You know I I tried a few a few you know like when I was first out on tour, and they never worked. But this one we got you know back in November and I hit a few on the range and I'm like wow that's it was so much easier to hit. I could hit it way higher. And yeah, I liked it. Well, so here's the deal, DJ. We appreciate you coming on, no doubt about that. You got me so fired up about this rescue that you finish up with him. I'm going to go hit some balls. Here's one right here. I got a four rescue right here. Yeah, check this out. Let's see what we get. A flex. Yeah. That's fine. He sold. I appreciate it, DJ. I'm going to go catch that one. You said you carry 258. I think that's about 264. Catch them up this afternoon, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> Don't walk too fast. <laughs> All right, Alan, this ain't going to be like messing with DJ. You know, my club head speed isn't quite up there with DJ. That's ne all right. Never was. Doesn't make me a bad person, but... Uh, I'm guessing you want me to uh, get some baseline numbers of what I've been playing with. You're going to get back there and be the evil genius and laugh at me when I hit one out on the I'm toe and hook it. i laugh at you. We all miss hit a few. <laughs> but, yeah, we want to see where you're at and then get your speed, launch, spin, and then I can kind of put some things together for you and we'll compare them. All right, you got it. We still looking at the yellow flag, right? Yeah, that'll work. I wish there was more than one yellow flag out there. All right, that's a pretty good one for me. Maybe just a touch towards the toe. Okay. Sit, uh, sit a couple more. Note to the folks at home, they went right over the yellow flag. I'm not hitting anymore, Alan, because those two are the best I can oh, you, hit it. You're peaking early, huh? <laughs> I hear him back there working on something, folks. Yeah, I'm making, I'm making something up here. All right, one more. We won't count that one. I told you the first two were as good as I was going to do. We should have quit there. That's all right. All right, what you got for me? So based on our numbers, I got a uh, nine-degree driver here, Sim Max. Okay, we got you in a 60-gram Ventus Velocor shaft. So all right. we're going to start with, start with that. Obviously, a lot of this is about how the player likes to look at the club and likes the uh and obviously likes the feel of it 
Club looks good. All right, let's see what we got here. I was a little out in front of that one. That might have been user error there. That's all right. What I like about it is uh, even though it was user error, you swung that about two miles per hour faster. What, is, what uh, does that equate to, two miles an hour and, and speed? Probably, probably say two to three yards per mile per hour. That's not a bad thing. It felt good. Yeah, good. A little better number? Yep. Yeah. I'm at 108. We're getting faster every swing. This club launches a little bit lower. I'm a, I'm a little more comfortable with that. I like the loft for sure. Let me get one more. All right, I got that one on the business end. <laughs> All right, cool. So, got our spin down. Got, uh, got our carry up. That was your fastest ball speed. Um, you know, we always round up, right? So, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you got to ship when up, we're weighing round up in. The paycheck, round <laughs> up the ball speed. <laughs> so, uh, 162. So, uh, smoke that out there, 256. The cool thing is with the land angle and everything, which is really when you're fitting, is what you're looking at, how that thing's hitting the ground. Yeah. You don't want it coming in more than 35. You know, if it gets in lower 35, that one was landing 26, so your rollout's 294. Yeah. So I, a lot I of golf courses, you can take that around. Yeah, especially playing not the back tees anymore. I'm happy with that. Yeah. No, that felt that felt really good there. You think this is a winner, or we ought to look at one more? Uh, let's try just one more shaft just to give you – I always like for the player to have some feel of some different things. So let's look at uh, – the cool thing about fit carts today, we can spin these things out pretty fast. So let's uh, try just a little, just a little heavier, a little bit heavier shaft um, than this one. I'd probably recommend a 70 gram for you. And why is that? Just just for spin, just to knock a little spin off. So. If, uh, if you hit down on it a little bit, hmm. and uh, that, that weight will help kind of just knock a little bit of that spin numbers off. So, it, so the heavier the shaft, that brings the spin down too. Yeah, that helps to bring the spin. So loft, taking, and that's what you know, you mentioned Dustin is saying how hardly anyone on tour plays less than a nine degree, but yet when I get fitter, fitting the amateurs, they come in with eights because they're hitting it too high. They think it's from the loft. Yeah. But it's actually because they're hitting down on it and spinning it. Yeah. So, yeah, taking loft off does bring the spin down. Yeah. But there's a point of diminished return. And it almost makes you hit down harder on it. Yeah, it can. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. I felt pretty good about that swing. I'll be interested to hear what the numbers are. Spun up a little bit on you, but you still flew that thing 255, roll out 273. Oh, 
that's no good. I'm trying to turn my hips. <laughs> In the back swing? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I usually would never give uh, swing advice during a fitting so we can see the true, <laughs> the true monster. But what's great about this and the technology uh, that Tomo is telling us is how the aerodynamics of that club allows you to swing it faster. You definitely are close to three miles per hour club head speed faster with this head. And we'll take anything we can get. Absolutely. That's good. I'm going to swing it there. It's pretty good. Still, I think the shaft we had before overall, uh, you know, we'd hit quite a bit more to get a good, true feel for what you need. But uh, the shaft before gave you a little more ball speed, a little more yardage, yeah, um, a little less spin. So probably uh, we'd look at trying to find a profile 60. You can always change the tips of it to help you. Okay. But uh, yeah, 60 or 70, and just kind of getting the right profile. Meaning, is it a high kick, a low kick, or a medium kick shaft? Okay. So uh, it looks like with the driver, we're in a Fujikura Ventus S shaft with the uh, Sim Max at Sim Max. Uh, nine, nine degrees. degrees. Yeah. All right. Let's find us a three wood that goes with it. All right. Cool. All right. So we got a few different options. Most of the time, and you tell me. Most of the time, players like a little heavier three wood. I've always played 10 grams heavier in my three wood than my driver. I don't know why, it's just what everybody said to do. Okay, well let's start with, we're gonna go even heavier to start. We're okay. gonna go with an 80, okay. again, Fuji Cora Tour Spec Shaft. And again, that's the Sim Max, and like Tomo mentioned, the technology's the same, Sim Max, going to spin a little less. Uh, the sim's going to spin a little bit more. Boy, this head looks good. I can really tell you. This is the um, uh, three-wood that DJ says he's playing with, right? Yep, that is. And I asked him, does he use it out of the fairway or off the tee? Very quickly, he said off the tee. I can see why. I just, it's a bigger head. And if you're going to hit a three-wood off the tee very much, you got to have a bigger head with a little depth on it, I think. And this looks like an excellent three wood uh, to be hitting off a tee box. Well, that's one of the hardest things is as technology's improved and the driver heads have gotten bigger, that three wood and driver, the disparity is so greater than the old days, as you yeah. know, that three wood and driver wasn't that big of a difference. Yeah. Now it looks like big difference. a huge difference. So it is, it has turned into a harder fitting club for sure. That's a little high, but I sort of like that it, it's easy to get up in the air. What was the carry yardage on that one? 233. Yeah, that's not bad. Sort of a weak, this is at 15 degrees or a little more sort of a weak three wood, right? Yeah, it's a 15. We can, uh, we'll put you in a, a 14 to try. I think the Sim Max, <laughs> Definitely fits your spin numbers. Feels good. Pretty good. Let's uh, let's just try. Same profile, just a little, that's in the 70S, just, just to compare the numbers. All right. 
again, it's kind of how far would you like to hit a three wood? 300? No, that's what I got a driver for. <laughs> you know, I like something I can hit in there 240 ish. Pretty good there. I like the feel of this three wood better than the other one I was hitting. Yeah. I can just tell you it has a click, a good feel to it, and it launched just a little bit lower. Lower, yeah. I don't know what your numbers tell you, but that's just what I felt there. Yeah, it did. Yeah, definitely launched lower than the one before. So that launched around nine. Yeah. The other ones were launching around 11. And this is um, just about 10 grams heavier than that driver shaft that we like. Correct. Even that, I know you didn't launch it as well as you like, but it didn't get away from you left, which is pretty important with a three wood. I was trying, there was a little bit of a pull. I was still in the fairway though, Alan. Yeah. I was trying to hit me a little stinger there just to make sure you're paying attention. You're showing off, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Stinger, Alan. Yeah, that's my miss today, but that's acceptable. This is a good looking, good feeling three wood right here. And I like the fact that it's just 10 grams heavier than the driver shaft we like. Again, and grams usually spin. It changes, uh, helps us knock a little, when it's sitting on the ground, helps us knock a little bit of spin off of it. Well, I feel like we got a good combo here. I really like the Simmax driver, Simmax three wood. They look, hand me, hand, hand me that one over there, would you? Yeah. I, I like to me when I look down I see they 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 go together. Yeah. It's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> they go together. I like but I I like a flow through the irons, through the wedges. I, I just like it where everything goes together. When I put these two down, they go together. And I know having these shafts in the same family, that makes everything go together. But yeah, I sure. I believe that's a good fit. I think we got a winner here. Alan, the Simmax driver in three wood. Feels great. Oh, you make us look smart, so I appreciate it. It's hard to do, but somebody's got to do it. Thanks, bud. You got it. I'm headed out to the golf course with these. I'll see y'all later. A lot later. Because I'm going to be <laughs> on the golf course for a long time with these. Thanks for joining us. I'm Charlie Reimer. We'll see you next time on the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, powered by PlayGolfMyrtleBeach.com.